Hi, I'm Astrid from Juzi, a South African web development company that specializes in custom blown websites. Most of our clients are local MPOs. We also have some international and corporate clients. I'm joined today by my team member, Carl, and we're going to chat about a really awesome plan product that we're currently implementing for one of our international clients. So which awesome plan product are we talking about today, Carl? Thanks for the intro, Astrid. Uh, for those who don't know Juzi, I'm Carl. I'm a front-end developer and designer. Uh, the product we'll be focusing on today is Plone Multilingual. It is used to manage a Plone website that needs to be available in more than one language. How cool is that? Who might need something like this for their website? Well, maybe everybody should be considering it. Accessible content is becoming more and more critical to ensure that all your possible users have access to it. Not everyone is a first language English speaker. Indeed. So how does Plone Multilingual work? Multilingual works by essentially creating different microsites in the language you need on your website and then linking them to each other. This is either done as you create the content or by creating each language independently and then linking pages that have the same content. So it's essentially a page linking mechanism. Yep. How cool is that? So how do we get it on our Plone site? First, we need to install it. Let me show you. To start the setup, you head over to Site Setup on your Plone instance and head over to your add-ons. You'll find your multilingual support add-on and install it. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's as much as you need to install the actual add-on. Uh, then when you head on over to the language option, there are a few options under your multilingual tab. But first, what you'll do is you'll find the languages or language in our case now that we want to add. Uh, we'll be working with Portuguese. Select it, add it to your options, and then indicate that you want the language selected to show. This is what will be used to give the user the option to toggle between the languages. You've got your negotiation scheme, which you can also work with. This means that you can add different uh, types of domains for the different languages, but we won't be doing it in this case. And you've also got options for multilingual in this case. So we'll save. And then when I head back to the actual site, you'll see that you've got English and you've got Portuguese as two options. Nice. Oh, yes. That's as easy as that. Nice. Um, oh, yes. And is there a month monthly subscription cost? So many platforms these days upsell with paid for add-ons. They have these pesky, unexpected extra cost surprises. As you can see, when I showed you how to install it, there's no monthly subscription cost for Plone Multilingual. That's cool. The benefit of using an open source product. Now it's been installed. How does it work? Let me show you how to create some content in different languages. First of all, we'll head over to the English site. And here, we will add a new page. And for demonstration purposes, we'll just add a title and make this an English page and save. There's nothing fancy. Then we can head over to the Portuguese side. So what I'm doing in this case is adding the two pages independently and then linking them to each other. Go right over to the Portuguese site. And as you can see, everything at this point is in Portuguese. So we'll add a new page. Fortunately, I know the tools well enough to not 
uh, struggle when I add these items. Now to know where to click. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So now we'll add a Portuguese page. And now we've got a Portuguese page in the Portuguese section, English page in the English section, and we want to link these to each other. To do the linking, I'm just going to head over to the English section because obviously I would like to see the tools in English. We'll click on the English page and you'll see now that you've got multilingual installed, you've got a new tab uh, that isn't generally available in your, uh, in your tool set on the left hand side. Click on translate and then manage translations. And we can now actually link something to in Portuguese. So you can do all the, the linking stuff in the language that you're most comfortable with. You don't have to be comfortable in, in all the languages. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So now you're working with Portuguese and you're going to find it in the Portuguese section and there's your Portuguese page. Oh, cool. And you connect the translation. Very nice. That means that that English page when I want to see the Portuguese version of it, it immediately takes me to the Portuguese page. Another way of doing it is to actually go to the English section. We're gonna add another new page. And we can actually create Portuguese. Uh, all languages that you've added will then obviously appear in this list. And this is what you'll see. This makes it a little bit easier because what you'll see is actually the content that is in the English page. And that means that you can actually take that and translate it line by line. Wow. And you can add all the items to it, and we can save it. And that means that that page has got a Portuguese version already. As easy as that, that means that you've now created two linked pages, and the Portuguese pages are done as well. Oh, great. Uh, remember, it is important to note that this is not an automatic translation tool, as you could see. You are still translating the content yourself. Remember, like you said, it's a page linking mechanism. Oh, yes, not a translation tool. How can the editor then make sure that they target all the languages when making changes? How can I make sure that the object that I've added to the Portuguese version of my website, for example, is also added to the English version or, or as I said, or as you said, a microsite? Fortunately, the tool does indicate which other languages have been created for an object. If we head on to the English page, then we can go to manage translations and we can immediately see which ones have been created already. So we've already created a Portuguese page. We can actually unlink it if we want to, but in this case, obviously we do not want to. Any other languages that have not yet been linked will be indicated in this list as well. Okay, cool. It also makes a lot of sense to use the same sitemap for all language microsites. That will help you see which objects need to be translated and which objects have already been translated. Does this mean all the objects have to be translated? No, not all objects have to be linked to different language versions. Some content may not be available in all languages on your site, either because it doesn't need translating or because it isn't available in another language. For example, research papers, news articles, or audio. But then what happens when the English user clicks on an item that doesn't have an English language version, only a Portuguese version? If there's Portuguese content that doesn't have an English version, the English user will be redirected to the English homepage. That is how Plone Multilingual is currently set up. Let me quickly show you. So if we head on over to 
well, we can actually just stay in the English section, add a new page. And we now want to see this in Portuguese. It will simply take us to the home page of the Portuguese section. Okay, so the site at least won't fall over. That's good news. If there's content that is created in one language but doesn't have a different language version, the user is taken to the home page of the language they've selected when they try to view an unavailable translation. Okay, but what about if we want to add another language, say in a year's time, for example, French? Fortunately, this is quite easy to do. We simply add another available language in the settings and from there create and link new translations for each object. So it's basically like adding another microsite. Oh, uh, cool. So Carl, what, what would your review, say for example, a Google review be of Clone Multilingual? How have you enjoyed using it? At the moment, we have one site in production for Juicy using Clone Multilingual. It has been great to use, easy to install, easy to understand, and straightforward in the way it works. In the past, about 12 years ago, I created a multilingual website using LinguaPlone, a previous Plone-based multilingual solution. LinguaPlone has been discontinued, and this new solution, Plone Multilingual, has received a lot of attention from the Plone community. I'm very happy with it. Okay, let's chat about our current client. Who are we busy implementing this for? We are currently working with a client of ours, ACQF, to put together a number of country-specific websites for qualifications associations in these countries. And these countries are generally English second language, which means a translation tool will ensure that the content is accessible to everybody in that country, not just the English speakers. In this case, it is a site for INQ the Angolan Qualifications Association. And the Plone site is in Portuguese and English. Great. Thank you, Carl, for showing me how Plone Multilingual works. I must say it's also great to know that Plone has excellent solutions that don't have these additional monthly subscription costs. I look forward to many more chats in future, looking at more of Plone's elegant and open source solutions. Thank you, Carl. And now to our viewers, have you use Plone Multilingual. Let us know in the comments how you're liking it. And remember to like and share this video. If you have any questions about our experience with this product, feel free to reach out. We're always happy to chat. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.